Well, we're now leaving our um, camp pitch at Devisers, a camping and caravanning club site, and we're heading off to Stonehenge. So um, well, everything's hitched up, we're all ready to go, we'll see you there. Here we go, we're meeting some people at the uh, motorhome service point. There's another channel for you to uh, subscribe to. Lovely people, and they say they are who they are. Wow. So are we. Here he comes, look. Oh yeah. And what's your name? Owen. And your channel name? Uh, Beryl Mary Travels. Lovely. Okay, well we'll give you a shout out. Cool. Yeah. Well, I've been following you guys for a few years. <laughs> Thank you very much. As you do. <laughs> And we meet right at the entrance, so we're leaving the site and we didn't realise we were on the same site together. Nice meeting you. Well, that was great meeting Owen and his wife and we did present him with a Posh Cats mug and sticker. And uh, we also got a sticker from, from Owen. So um, uh, we didn't have long to talk, we were blocking the road a bit, so we had to move on and uh, he needed to get home, we needed to get to our next site. So leaving the Devisers um, camping and caravanning site, there's a little bit tight on the entrance there. There's one or two parked cars in the lane that approaches this site and Sue had to jump out of the uh, van just to check that we didn't uh, drag Ethel uh, too close to a parked car. It's this little blue one on the left here. Um, I think they're local residents, but uh, it does make it a little bit tight on the, um, on the exit here. So, off we went through Devisers um, with car on tow and we eventually uh, realised that we were going to be arriving far too early at the uh, next site, the 1pm arrival time, so we pulled over in this nice laneway. We had about half an hour and a nice cup of uh, tea and got back on the road using our caravan and motorhome club sat nav. The only thing is it brought us through Winterbourne Stoke which is a little village just before you get to this junction which is the junction with the A303. Notoriously busy road and I think this red car had been waiting here a good few minutes before we arrived. We then had to ride away another five minutes or so before we could turn right at this junction. So I'm not sure whether that was the best route, but um, we made it across safely anyway, and it was just a case of turning left at the next um, slip road, and the campsite was just on the left. So we were almost there. Well hello and welcome back to Posh Cats Camping in Wiltshire and uh, this is a three night stop 
at the Stonehenge camping and glamping site and uh, it's not far from Stone Stonehenge, it's only about a 10 or 15 minute drive and uh, beautiful countryside just near the A303 I think and um, we're out at the gate here it's one of two cars up and down um, this little road but uh, once you get on the site it's just a bit of white noise from the uh, main A303 let's have a look at the first big field um, this is a big uh, camping field this site is very much aimed at camping and glamping and uh, I'll show you one or two of their glamping pods which are quite impressive um, so look at this almost like a rally field but there are electric hookups and pitches around the outside of it so big field here this is at the top of the site and as you can see uh, lots of space here this is closed off as it's winter it's not being used it's quite soft because we've had a good bit of rain in the last two or three weeks but uh, down this end there's some portable toilets and bins and there's a couple of water taps on this field for drinking water as well so summertime camping that's going to be a, a cracking site if you've got a, a group or an event going on it'd be lovely to do it on that field well, there's a single track drive on the way in this is the private drive down to the site it's not a long drive, uh, you can see what's coming if there's another vehicle coming up um, and there's a position down the bottom here where you could uh, uh, jostle for position notice there's lots of little signs like these ones indicating uh, different areas hedgerows, uh, planting and so on and the perimeter hedges are all nicely kept of course all the leaves are off the tree now, trees now, which is an uh, indication that we're in mid-December. Uh, no campsite is going to look at its best with the, the blossom on the plants and all of that gone for the uh, winter season. Coming down to the main top end of the uh, caravan motorhome hard stands and the bronze pitches are around to the right here. No, that's not Smurf, but it does look like a more classic version of him. Smurf is on the next pitch. Nice pitches. This site is gently sloping, so the pitches do require um, a little bit of levelling. But uh, they're nice, clean gravel, which is great. And as you can see to my left here is another field. Uh, again, gently sloping, but this is a camping field in the main, I think. And uh, marked out with pitch numbers. And again, electric hookups on the perimeter of the field. There's a late arrivals bay here. For those that get in very late, but they do uh, say that you can arrive up to 8pm, which is great. And... Uh, through this gate here we're into the main field that I saw from the top and here we have a fresh water tap and one of the most impressive clamping pods um, a custom build bus and uh, <laughs> I'd love to have a look inside that and uh, also a clamping pod here number 10 Now if you do come to this site with a caravan in tow, you need to stop at these gates and uh, it says on the post there, report to reception and uh, if you go into that area there, you may well have to turn around which is a little tricky if you're on one of these pitches but uh, the gate's kept closed for that reason so it does prompt you to stop It's quite narrow down this part Pictures come with a picnic bench, which is rather nice. And these pictures have electric and water uh, very close by. 
fact those pitchers have got their own water tap. As you can see it's quite narrow as we come down to the bottom here. And judging by um, the aesthetics it's uh, pretty clear that these are either seasonal or residential. They haven't been moved for some time. Our ladies' toilets and showers are in the right hand building and gents in the left hand building. In one of the gents' washrooms, we have these are heated um, with a nice uh, towel rail there and a uh, toilet and a shower cubicle, all in one unit. Morning! <laughs> and uh, they are coin operated with a pound coin for eight minutes and uh, there is a note on here to say that the uh, money goes to the air ambulance charity chemical waste little compound here for waste and recycling so your dry waste goes in the red bins and recycling and glass recycling all separated And the kitchen. Now these very cute little glamping pods are all tucked away and uh, really quite nice. Winter sun is uh, bright this morning but uh, you can see from these this one would have a canopy on. And with its own little garden And there's another one over here. With its canopy. <laughs> Number nine. Smallest clamping pod I've seen. <laughs> Great fun though for outdoor living. And this is reception down here. Now as there's no room up on the uh, top where I'm pitched, this is where we've kept little Ethel. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. As you can see lovely garden just here between reception and uh, another clamping pod just in the hedges there and looking across from the bottom of the uh, field here across at Smurf as you can see lovely open space these grass fields are closed off and not used in the winter months and I'm um, walking along here and it's very soft we've had a good bit of rain in the last two or three days in fact storm barrel went through whilst we were here and uh, it was torrential for several hours but uh, nice views across to the church between the trees there yeah we just got to check the lights and we're ready to go to our next destination Well, we try to be honest with our reviews and this is, on paper is a perfect campsite. The website's very good and it looks as if it offers everything you need with a camper van or a motorhome. But we were disappointed by the £15 charge uh, to park the car, particularly as many of the pods were unoccupied and there were plenty of places that we could have parked the car without damaging the grass. We also found that there was no grey empty uh, points and no dog bins and nowhere really to walk the dog. So we thought that £96 
for three nights stay was a little excessive. However, if you're glamping and camping in the summer, this looks like the perfect place to come. We also had a few issues with uh, our electric hookup, which we didn't realise was the site. We thought there was something wrong with our van. So we've notified the uh, campsite of our issues and uh, to date we haven't had a response. But we will let you know if they do come back to us. Until next time, bye bye for now.